The movie Black Hawk Down is an exemplary situation in which the international community became involved in the nation's crisis, Somalia, and through the use of military force, was unable to resolve the conflict, but rather created more chaos and essentially failed to resolve the problem. Today, something called the International Criminal Court has been developed in an attempt to resolve international conflicts such as that of Somalia in the past. The International Criminal Court attempts to do so by using legal means and methods through the cooperation of nations across the globe. The success of the ICC can be seen currently with over 100 nations signing something called the Roman Statute. And when they signed the Roman Statute, what they agreed to was upholding to the ICC's international laws and regulations and in regards to treating their own citizens and the citizens of other nations with respect and abiding to humanitarian law worldwide. The court is very controversial within the United States because the U.S. has actually not signed the ICC Roman Statute. And therefore, when we bring up topics such as how our troops are to behave in Iraq and what punishments should be acted on upon our troops becomes highly controversial. In today's speech, though, we will be actually taking a look at the situation in Sudan, Darfur, which many people have heard of, and we will see whether the ICC and the government of Sudan can work together towards a resolution to solve the problem, to solve the genocide, and the humanitarian crisis that is currently going on. However, I must unfortunately inform you that after we take a look at the situation, there will not be able to be a resolution by having the ICC and the government of Sudan working together. And after this speech, you will see why such a resolution is not possible. Currently, since the conflict has started, over 400,000 people have died from the genocide in Sudan, and 1.2 million people have been displaced from their homes, according to ADL.org. This civil war-torn region is in large hand the responsibility of the president of Sudan, al-Bashir. According to a May 27, 2010 Guardian article, the president has an arrest warrant out for him by the ICC, the International Criminal Court. And he can actually not travel out of his country out of fear of being arrested. And according to a March 4, 2009 Huffington Post article, he has been charged with war crimes and crimes against humanity, such as the 400,000 people that have died under his hands. When taking a look at the conflict, we will take a look at the conflict through the eyes of the authors that wrote Essentials of Negotiation, Lewicki, Saunders, Barry, and Linton. And by using negotiation and mediation concepts, we'll, we will better understand why a resolution to this conflict between the ICC and the Sudanese government is not possible. On page 101 from the book, it states that integrated agreement will result from each party identifying each other's interests. Essentially, both parties have to find common ground that allows them to move forward in talks and negotiations. We will first take a look to Al-Bashir, and then we will take a look to the ICC and try to determine whether common ground between both parties can be found. And we will see that they can't be. So while taking a look at Al-Bashir before his recent election, his primary interest, his primary goal was simply to be elected. And according to Time.com May 27th article, despite his masterminded atrocities in Darfur, he was still able to succeed in being elected for another five-year term. And despite his involvement in the genocide, he was able to use the same fraudulent techniques 
they can use when they initially got elected 20 years ago to become elected again. So we can see from his past history of behavior that his common interest, his common goal, is to simply be elected. And he has taken no efforts in any way to resolve the genocide that he has supported and funded at times. Additionally, it is important for us to understand, though, that a result of his actions has prevented him from traveling outside the country. Which is why we take a look at the ICC next. Because if he were to travel outside the country, he could actually be arrested by the National Criminal Court and be brought to a criminal court tribunal in Hague. So secondly, we take a look at the interests and primary goals of the ICC to see why their goals and interests do not match up with al-Bashir's. Al-Bashir, or excuse me, the International Criminal Court's primary interest, according to the ICCnow.org, is its responsibility for trying those who have committed crimes against humanity, such as al-Bashir and his government. Additionally, since 1998, the 120 nations that have signed the Roman statute are expected to uphold international law in its treatment of its own civilians and civilians of other nations. However, al-Bashir and the Sunnis government did not sign this treaty. Therefore, given the limited jurisdiction over the nation of Sudan. And what we can see from the ICCnow.org is its commitment and in preserving human rights across the globe and not taking any exceptions into account. By understanding this, we can see using methods from negotiation and mediation that no common ground can be found between the two parties, that their interests are strictly different, and that there is no way that a leader of a nation who has promoted genocide in an organization which fights to preserve human rights and international humanitarian laws can ever come together in order to resolve a conflict. No resolution can be found between two groups that have such opposing interests. In addition, no credibility can be established on behalf of al-Bashir due to his actions in the past and currently, both at a legal level, at a political level, and at a humanitarian level. He has completely violated any possibility for a mediator or negotiator, negotiator to establish trust between him and any other organization. And this trust is so essential and paramount for success when resolving conflicts. And due to this violation of these humanitarian laws, we will not see a resolution between the ICC and al-Bashir. We can only hope that we do not see another Somalia occur in Sudan. 